Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So you guys aren't going to believe this one. Let me read something to you real quick. Because did you know that magazines that can hold more than 10 rounds are not covered by the Constitution? So says the judge. So a judge actually said this, a U.S. judge. Quote, plaintiffs have not shown that magazines capable of accepting more than 10 rounds of ammunition are firearms in common use today for self-defense and thereby covered in the plain text of the Second Amendment. Well, the judge got one thing right out of that entire quote, and that's that magazines are not firearms, they're arms, and there is a difference. So let's go ahead and talk about the judge that said that and where that's going to have a pretty big effect on law. So let's talk about it. This channel is proud to be sponsored by SDI, Sonoran Desert Institute. If you ever wanted to take your hobby to the next level, check out their online courses by clicking the link down in the description box or calling 480-999-4767 and get a head start on your future today. So the judge that said that was Judge Karen Immigrant, and I'm not even sure if I'm saying that correctly, and to be honest with you, I really don't care, but she is the judge that's going to be overseeing the trial for measure 114 out of the state of Oregon. This is, again, the measure that just absolutely decimated the Second Amendment in Oregon, banning magazines and creating a licensing scheme, and it caused all sorts of trouble. It barely passed in that state. Again, it wasn't a bill. It was a measure. It was voted on by the people, and it passed by the narrowest of margins. I believe it was just under a 1% victory, or something like a 0.7% victory that got that over the finish line. And so it's created a lot of trouble ever since, and obviously multiple lawsuits have been filed. Well, those lawsuits have finally made their way to trial. She's gonna be overseeing it, and it doesn't look like she's gonna be using Bruin in any way, shape, or form. As a matter of fact, it looks like she's trying to avoid Bruin altogether. Now, what I find really interesting here is that she completely overlooks all of the statistics, okay? All of the statistics that show that they are arms covered by the Second Amendment. The, the major one being that they're in common use for lawful purposes. Now, she says that she doesn't believe they're in common use. Now, if you were just to look at the numbers, you would see that there are millions of them across the country, from California all the way to New York. They are everywhere and it's pretty much just the standard now it's not even like one of those odd things it's just something that you go and you pick up from the store it's it's 100 percent common and in common use and majority of it is for lawful purposes there is no way statistically to deny that however with those glaring numbers right in your face she still thinks that they're not in common use the only way to do that is to simply ignore the numbers altogether now they don't have to be for defensive purposes they have to be for lawful purposes but that's another reason that she's doing that she's saying that there's not that many cases where these were used in a defensive purpose and therefore maybe they're not covered because of that either when really their defensive use is irrelevant it's the lawful use that is the most relevant they're they're in possession they're in common use and they're in common use for lawful purposes not for defensive purposes so as you can see she's trying to just kind of skirt around things and she's very clearly using a state balanced approach right so the state says that they're trying to do this because they want you know to protect public safety and so she's actually looking at that as a reason to justify measure 114 being constitutional when clearly in Bruin it says that you can't do that you cannot use the interest balancing approach or the two-step approach like what the Ninth Circuit has been using all this time you have to look at only and and I mean only text history and tradition number one look at the text of the Second Amendment uh, after that go ahead and look at the nation's historical traditions of firearms regulations and see if you can find some type of historical analog and you know what they're not gonna be able to find a historical analog that backs measure 114 and how do I know that well because California who has well endless amounts of money has hired historians and attorneys and they have been looking at this pretty much since Bruin came out and they still haven't been able to find anything of any type of significant relevance whatsoever. So if California with its endless resources can't find a historical analog, well, Oregon sure as hell isn't going to be able to find one either. And so they're, they're not going to be able to find a way to back it under Bruin. So the only way to get this through is if they simply ignore Bruin and sort of work their way and word their way and interpret their way around it. But I got to be honest, it's not looking good for Oregon at this point through this trial. Because, uh, you know, obviously the judge is coming from one side here, and I don't think she's going to want to switch that, you know, direction anytime soon. It would take, I think, an uber amount 
of convincing in order to do that. So I don't think she's going to rule in favor of finding 114 unconstitutional to begin with. And so again, it's going to have to go to the Court of Appeals and you know back up maybe up to the, the Supreme Court, who knows. But uh, I don't see there being any relief at the end of this trial, which I have heard can conclude at the end of like next week or so. So we'll see what happens. But it's, it's just absolutely terrible when you get an activist judge and it's not looking good for Oregon at this point, at least in terms of getting any type of relief at the moment. I think in the end, Measure 114 is going to be gone. I think that's what's going to happen in the end. But for now, people in Oregon who want to see some type of relief just aren't going to get it. And it's, it's because of stuff like this. So I wanted to let you guys know about that. The trial continues. We'll see what happens at the end of it. And uh, regardless if the outcome's favorable or not, I'll make a video about it and let you guys know what happened. But again, I wanted to let you know that uh, apparently mags are not protected by the Constitution, according to Karen. Thank you all very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.